95 should be 86. But I don't see how that's going to really uh, do anything concrete for me. In the end games, I'd like to have it in B5 somehow. I just can't make it. Maybe H6 here. Well, slightly weak in my position. But I don't think... Um, I don't think it's too drastic, and I'm really um, a little nervous with that knight on g5. It, it ties me up. So another move I could play, I guess, would be like knight to c4. But um, I don't really have any means of making progress. Knight c4 is just trading pieces. One thing I could do is try to get my rook active via a5. But this move I'm a little surprised by knight f3. I really thought he was going to be... Um, trading pieces now. I think this is a bit weird that he doesn't want to trade pieces. I feel that it just feels like black is um, black is a tiny bit better here. But it may be a case where he's going to play rookie one and I'm going to have problems with my e7 pawn. So if I play knight c4 he plays rook e1, um, then I have knight takes b2, so it's not so simple. I don't think he can just ignore knight c4. And that didn't, you know, I didn't mean to rhyme when I said that. Ignore knight c4. Welcome everybody to my chess stream. We've got six viewers so far. Hopefully we're going to pick it up. It's been a little slow. But I don't know what to expect really. Saturday nights are probably the best. If I can try to, to start off Saturday nights, I, I realize that as far as people that are watching from North America and South America, uh, the time the time there is probably best um, for Saturday, I guess. I'm going to play tonight until about uh, 9.45 Central European time when the New England Patriots play against I, I need to get in b5 here nfl playoff football and anyway it's time for me to uh, pack it in all right knight d2 now where do i want to go c6 or c7 c7 looks scary because i'm on that diagonal uh with the bishop on g3 c6 doesn't defend I like c6. It, it would give me the possibility of playing, um, of playing e6, you know, and maybe ultimately getting out of this paralysis on the file here. So, one thing I have seen occasionally in these kind of structures is a piece sacrifice for black. You could win like this whole pawn chain, but they take c3 at some point. But obviously, my whole Position has to be in order. Um, so, my house has to be in order before I can do something like sack a piece for his whole pawn chain on the queen side. And even then, it's not going to really work with my, my broken pawns. Um, if I had healthy queen side pawns, or healthier queen side pawns, uh, I could see, you know, a knight takes c3 in the end game, like for four pawns or something, but it's probably. It would be pretty unusual if I could make something like that work in this kind of position. So this is kind of what I expected, um, sort of standoff, very typical situation in this line. It's difficult to play for a win against the London system in any line. I mean, it really is one of the solid, the most solid possible variations for white, especially against the King's Indian. Um, I will check my email. If anybody else needs to send me an email, contact me. Um, you can you can do that via my email chess video train video chess trainer excuse me video chess trainer at gmail.com. He's inviting me to play f5 f4 here and shut out his bishop, but it would drastically weaken my position along the line. Um, so I'm not I'm not in a big hurry to play. Not in a big hurry to play that, but I don't know what to do. You know, we're looking for peace sacrifices b4. I mean, pawn sacrifices b4. b4 is not happening. Maybe e5 would just backfire, you know, just to get rid of his weakness for him. 
looks like he's stopping me from playing like e6 with this move um I don't really know what to do I'd like to play f5 but it just weakens my position so although it's interesting um Feels it, weak, it weakens my position. My knight on d5 is the heart of my game. I think he's going to try to trade that off at some point. Right now, it doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like I'm in any danger, but it's hard to like create a plan. He's also stopping me from playing. Um, I've got to be careful here. There's big dangers. Like if I move my rook, rook a a6, he's got knight takes d6. Um, I wonder if my king should go back to g8. Actually, seems kind of ironic, but I'd like to keep it in the center. F5, activating my king and weakening e6. I'm worried that he trades my knight somehow, but how? F5, knight d2, and then knight f1, knight e3. But if I play f5, f4, I severely weaken my pawn structure. That's the problem. And I'm running out of time. I just don't really want to do that. I don't really want to weaken my pawn structure. All right. I'm going to play a debatable move here. King g8. I don't want to get mated on the back rank. Some kind of weird tactics with knight takes d6. Uh, we're just going to have to play fast now. As usual, what's happened is I've been facing these opponents who are just really practical. And a um, position like this I'm going to lose on time. Most of the games, it looks like. Nice played knight d2. And I'm not sure you know, what, what exactly this does. Um... What would happen if I play like bishop f6 here, for example, securing my pawn? And what if he goes 94? How would I feel about a position like giving up my bishop for his knight on e4? Um, e7 looks weak, but I could play e6. Maybe I should have played e6 last move, actually. e6 last move, it weakens d6. This is this is a position where I think it's kind of equal. I, I just have to kind of accept the position as equal, and I, I'm not better. Um, he should probably try to trade off my knight on d5. I mean, knight f1, knight e3, and white's probably a tiny bit better after that. Although you know, there's a lot of end games that are just simply drawn because he can't get at my can't get at my weak pawn on b5. So anyway, welcome everyone to the Twitch stream. This is International Master William Pascal. You can also check out my videos at uh, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I'm uploading a lot of this stuff from here, but uh, some of the longer streams have a little bit of trouble uploading, like all the episodes or parts. All right, I'm just gonna repeat moves. I think this guy's played okay. If he gets a draw, I'm gonna give him a draw. Um, I, you know, I don't claim to have any advantage here. Um, so, and I'm also like five minutes behind on the clock, so, if, um, if he plays for a win, then we'll play chess. If he wants to repeat position, I'll repeat. I don't, I don't have any claim to any advantage here, so, um, let's for the practicality of, of the, um, of the stream and, uh, of our learning experience, give this guy a draw. Nice game, buddy. Uh, classic London system. All right. We got another game immediately. Our favorite opponent, Dihar 2603. Okay. We played this guy in English where we beat him real badly. And we also lost the game with black in English. So every game has been in English. I'm a little unsure about this guy if, if he could. You know, I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but. You know, he doesn't seem like he's a computer, uh, but I was looking at his ratings and stuff. And it's, it's, it's kind of a weird account. Um, inconsistencies in his ratings. So, I don't know what to think about this guy. We've got real strange, like, ratings online. But he plays very, very fast. It may be just like a situation where he's not using computer assistance, but there's, like, more than one person playing on the same account or something like that. Because there were some inconsistencies I just couldn't really understand. Very low ratings and very high ratings. 
Okay, um, this is our this is our normal Reptoir against one of our normal Reptoir lines against the Kings of the End. I have played many things against the Kings of the End. So here, um, this is a line that I started playing with White because of Grandmaster Boris Golko using it against me sometime in the late 90s or early 2000s. Um, but this is like kind of classical approach, grabbing the bishop pair. Often people like to play it in, in tandem with the Benoni with c5. He, he's played it before um, c5 and he's committed to castling already here. There is a Dutch kind of idea that could happen. If I play something like Queen C2, he might play F5. So I'm a little reticent. It's a good square. Usually I put my Queen on C2. A little reticent to put it on C2 here. I think I play often D5 in this position. That's often uh, feeling a bit weird because I'm opening up the long diagonal for for black. Um. So it's really a choice, I guess. Bishop e2, queen c2, or d5. Knight b2 is also playable. Forcing his hand, you know, forcing him to take on g3. I guess knight knight d2 is, is okay. There's nothing, like, really wrong with that in this particular position. All right, I'll play d5. This is the move I've probably played the most. Knight takes g3, h takes g3. And c5. So we transpose. I think he might have other interesting options there. You know, this will transpose to the line where black plays c5, like on move 6. Uh, which pieces are these? Please type no sound. Um, yeah. Um, you guys do have sound. I assume. I, I would have known if there was no sound by now. I can't type everything. I already lose on time every game, almost. Um, sorry about that, but uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to type in all the moves. I mean, all my comments. All right, so Queen C2. D Har is uh, is an interesting player. I don't know who this guy is, or even where he's from. He's like hidden his country. Most people they let let their um, nationality or you know location be displayed. But d is very secretive, so I have no idea um, what d means, or what the significance of his name is, like 2603. So he saw knight takes g5. He played the classic f5. This, this position now, knight on f3 is pretty useful. I, I, I would normally pull it back to d2 in this line, but um, at the moment, you know, it seems like you know, I'm not sure his move order is 100% right, because he played f5 before developing his knight. Bishop d3 puts pressure on f5. It will prevent him from playing knight d7. If knight a6, we play a3. Yeah, so anyway, knight a6, knight c7, that's fine. You know, this, this is okay. This is a guy, though, who plays um, very, very fast. Pretty much universally every position. So now e5, this changes the whole character of the game and really raises an interesting question. Um, you know, what would Petrosian do here? Do we take on e6? I mean, that's kind of the default response. Um, but his pieces look really, really active. The other option is. Um, the other option is, is e4, which definitely seems weird. At least it looks weird on the surface, but um, I suppose it's like playable. The plan after that is uh, is the really interesting question. Um, could I like sack a pawn? You know, like e4, f4, pawn takes f4, e takes f4, e5. And e takes f4. E4, F4, pawn takes F4, E takes F4, E5. You know what the problem with this position is for me? Well, actually, that's interesting because, yeah, if he takes with the bishop, his H6 pawn is hanging. Um, 